Hello everybody, this is Reynold Gardner with the Oregon Department of Education and today we are going to look at the statewide program of study and within the natural resource area. Uh, this webinar was originally recorded on February 4th. Due to some technical issues, we had to re-record. So I'm recording it after the fact. This is not a live uh, rendition of the original recording, but I'm going to quickly jump through. Uh, webinar number three, element number three, is accountability and assessment, which is explicitly technical skill assessment in the program of study. And I know a number of the participants who are watching this are new to the Perkins conversation and program of study area. So there's some background information that's going to be shared uh, with you in regards to what is a program of study in some of the Perkins language. So if this is a repeat for a number of you, I apologize. The long-term goal of the entire statewide natural resource program of study process is that all the programs uh, forestry natural resource programs will be synced through the year 2020 and uh, for the upcoming four years. And if you have any questions, uh, please email me directly and uh, the access to this webinar will be on the Oregon Department of Education statewide program study website. So today's objectives, we have a couple announcements. We're going to identify the required components of the Perkins Program of Study, and then we're going to jump into technical skill assessment uh, and look at the definitions, what it is, what is needed, and then what the future would be. And then uh, I'm not going to address the secondary pathway funding and, uh, and within the conversation of the secondary pathway funding. A lot's been discussed about that. And email me if you have any questions on that. So announcements, the ONREF grant, annual grants that go out to forestry natural resource programs um, have already happened at this point. And then also if you're looking at the revitalization grants for the future bienniums, so that would be in 18 and 19, uh, I would encourage you that if you're going to be looking at that to already start working with your partners in reshaping, retooling what your program would look like. Timeline, uh, again, this is webinar number three of uh, the ongoing series. Uh, the next webinar is actually going to be April 21st. So accountability assessment, what is needed for the program of study? Um, in Perkins, uh, when we switched to Perkins 4 in 19, or I'm sorry, in 2007, uh, accountability and assessment was an entirely new area in the Perkins arena. And keep in mind, this was on the heels of the No Child Left Behind with all the, the assessment associated with No Child Left Behind. So it became a natural fit for the Perkins side of the educational arena. Uh, career technical education to start looking at how are students performing based upon the benchmarks, the standards, the skill sets, the goals that we have set for them. So let's jump into a little bit of Perkins. What is a program of study? A program of study is a sequential instruction that's associated with high schools and community college that allows students to have a seamless transition onto their next step, whether that's college, military, or uh, directly to the career. Uh, the Perkins Act is of 2006. So a program of study, the acronyms POS, and you'll see that used a lot interchangeably. Uh, POS, program of study, is not an elective program. Anybody could have a standalone elective, any school, and even arguably any teacher could teach it. But to be a Perkins recognized, there's a number of elements that have to be in place. And again, it's this seamless uh, transition. It's this seamless connection between the high school and the community college. Uh, Perkins Program of Study, POS, is money eligible, Perkins eligible. Uh, different regions, different consortium structures. So some of your regions uh, may do very well in Perkins. Other regions, it may not be very much added into your program as far as a benefit. Program of Study is built upon standards and a program of study has five elements. So what is CTE? CTE is Career and Technical Education. Is Perkins CTE? The answer is yes and no. Uh, that uh, 
Perkins is what is the money that drives CTE forward, but schools are doing a lot of great stuff without any Perkins money that would qualify as a program of study. Our CT courses elective classes? Uh, the, the answer is no. CTE means they're tied to standards. Uh, is vocational education CTE? Well, in the olden days, CTE was voc ed. In this new arena that we're in, the answer is no. Career and technical education is a vibrant conversation with business and industry that is pushing the conversation forward. And it's getting the industry to look at an existing program and say, we need something different. You're training students to the 1950s. We need students who are being trained to the 2030s. Uh, and then STEM. STEM is a new conversation. And in that, we're going to get closer and closer with STEM and CTE as we move forward. And good CTE involves components of STEM. Good STEM education has the relevance, so it is CTE. Are they the same? Uh, I won't jump into the debate at this time. <laughs> uh, continuing on, is pathway education um, career technical education? The answer is no. Uh, pathway education, pathway, and the word pathway has been used in a lot of different contexts in the recent years. Uh, so if we can keep this conversation singular that career technical education programs of study are, uh, are the focus of where we're going. Program of study uh, is CTE and uh, CTE TSPC and CT licenses. CT licensures indicate that a teacher has industry exposure in that area. It's 1,800 hours of actual business and industry over the last five years. If a teacher is lacking that and wanting to teach in a CTE area, there's additional efforts that have to be put forth. A committee comes together, they identify a work plan that would allow that teacher to get that exposure. And uh, an elective versus CTE in a program of study. There's a lot of programs out there, and even some of you who are listening, I would classify right now as an elective program. Once you go through the program of study process, which this is the third webinar of that series, you'll become a uh, program of study. I like to refer to it as varsity and JV. I know that offends some people, and I apologize for that. But in that regard, if you think of JV, they're out there working with the varsity players, but they never get the limelight. And their games are always uh, on off times when it's hard for parents and grandparents to go see. But it's the varsity players that always get the attention. That's essentially what CTE, Perkins Program of Study, are, are the varsity players. We're trying to make everybody varsity here. So in the world of Perkins, Oregon, we are a local control state. So each school district identifies how they're going to get to where they want to get. Uh, in this statewide program of study. If you look at what the program of study has to offer and you say, we're just too unique. This is how we do it. You can still go through the process to develop all your own program of study, but you're not going to have the hand holding from my side. There's not going to be a series of webinars. You're going to need to work with your region coordinator to make that happen. Uh, for a statewide program of study, these are the elements that have to be met. And these are the same elements that have to be met with any program of study. That your program of study is built upon standards and content. It has an academic crosswalk that shows where the courses are being met to what standard. Uh, there's alignment and articulation that you have ongoing efforts with community college partners. The colleges up to this point have indicated that they would like to work singularly with the entire state who's going to play with them versus having a little workshop for the teachers right around them and then teachers from outside that immediate area approach them saying, can we have our own little workshop? The answer is they've said we don't have the capacity at the college level to facilitate 30 outsiders all trying to do individual one-to-one -one work uh, efforts. Accountability and assessment, that's what we're talking about in this webinar. The next webinar coming up is Student Support Services, and then finally the Professional Development Plan of the teachers, both college as well as high school teachers. So here's some 
language we need to get into going back to the program of study. And this document's posted on the link that's listed, and uh, you can access it through, or uh, we'll also post it in uh, the content area. So terms that we need to be aware of. A CTE concentrator is any student who has earned one credit in uh, the program of study that is technically skill-based, so any of your approved courses, and half of that credit is identified as required. A completer is a student who has met all the required courses in that program of study. And a required CTE course is a course that is identified as a technical skill assessment course. And I know I'm going through these rather quickly because I want to get to the document that where all of this comes back to, uh, comes into play. Technical skill assessment is a valid and reliable technical skill measurement aligned to industry standards. So the standards that you have in your program, how are you assessing those? Additionally, it's only concentrators uh, who needs to take this. So if you have a student who your technical skill assessment course and your sequential layout happens in your sophomore and senior years, those are the required, uh, that's where the students get that. As soon as they take that as a sophomore, uh, it would be expected that they take that. So if it's a year-long sophomore course in their junior year, it would be expected that they would be offered. Now, they are not listed as completers. They are concentrators, but it gives you a benchmark as to how they're doing. Technical skill basement course, uh, these are courses that have industry validated standards. Uh, if you have a biology course that you're wanting to include in your program of study because it makes so much sense for the students to understand the biological processes that affect our uh, ecosystems, our wildlife, our habitat, our forests, I totally agree in that area. Yet, uh, the courses need to be uh, CTE courses, not academic courses. So, in your program update, and I uh, appreciate uh, Simon again for allowing me to use his mock-up. Here are where courses are identified as required. Now, in Simon's conversation, I'm discouraging him from listing all three of these courses as required. Because arguably, after they take their Forestry 1, they are a concentrator. By requirement, he's required to assess those students. Now. Uh, if he has forestry one and then forestry management, that would be a logical sequence. Now, it would still mean in this sophomore year, those students would be expected to be assessed based upon their content knowledge. Now, looking at our crosswalk matrix, here is our crosswalk. When you put a little checkbox in the technical skill assessment, that makes these courses respectively required. In coaching Simon, I would tell Simon to make forestry one, and forestry management as his technical skill assessment courses. Moving forward, here in the upcoming webinars, you're going to get the cover page and or application for the statewide program of study. That is what this document looks like. In this document, you are going to fill out, um, and let me see if I can find the actual cover page. Um, you are uh, going to fill out this application, and this is where you're going to load in your respective information for your uh, program of study. So in it, uh, it is a, a five-page document. There's a couple of formatting edits I need to do it to it to make it live. But explicitly, this is where you're going to jump in and load your technical skill assessment information in this area of uh, this area of the worksheet or of the cover page. And what you're going to do is you're going to declare what your technical skill assessment is. You are going to say, we have a locally developed, or we're going to use the national assessment. And this would be a good conversation to have with me one-on-one. -on -one. And I know as we move forward in the upcoming year, example, next year, 
one of the focus of our OFRI meetings when we meet for our professional development is to take some time to flesh this out. Are we going to utilize an, uh, an ONREF, I'm sorry, uh, Fun Rail model, future natural resource leaders model, or are we going to encourage local portfolios, or are we going to go with a national assessment piece? So, now, a lot of individuals are really concerned about technical skill assessment. And what does that mean? What is the Department of Education doing with it? Reynolds, how are you judging my program when, when I send in how many students I have? And the answer is right now it's just local data for local program improvement. So as you do your technical skill assessment, we at the department side know that you have 15 students who are concentrators who have taken that half a credit of a required course and in that we know that they should be assessed. If you only submit three students who took the TSA and you only have three students who passed, you may think you have 100% on technical skill assessment with three students. Department of Education looks at your student enrollment data and says, no, you should have had 15 students assessed. Additionally, with the student ID number that your school has for that student, one of those students that you think is a technical skill assessment completer or, or concentrator should have this may not be in it because of our data mismatch. At that point, we would only count one of your student or two of your students as being successfully assessed and you had 15 that should have been. So your completion rate's down, what is that, 8% uh, as a success threshold. So uh, again, locally, this is local data. We, we are not combing through it. But as you do your assessment and you realize that standard, fill in the blank standard, uh, 1A is not scoring that high on our assessment matrix, what is it that we're not hitting in the class that would re actively reflect that? Additionally, as you go through, if it's going to be an exit interview, uh, if you're going to do a locally based assessment, um, and the committee members are prepped appropriately, they ask a question about, tell us about where you've identified different plant species respective of uh, the Oregon Natural Resource Systems, and the student draws a blank and says, I don't know that we have in classes, then that committee would say that student's not technically skilled, assessed, or proficient in that area. But we'll get into this more the upcoming year. So in the upcoming year, there's going to be more collaboration. We're going to be looking at the standards. There's going to be some, some adjustment of the standards to incorporate more of the natural resource components. Right now, there's a heavy logging focus, uh, but we're, we need to get more of the water and some of the ecology respective of our outdoor natural resource systems. So right now, the question is, Gardner, what should I put in this box? What you need to put in this box, if you already have your technical skill assessment lined up, load that in. If you don't, give me a call and we'll do an if then. And it's going to be one of two items. Okay? You can put down NOCTI or ESIS, which has a national, it's a national test, pencil paper test, or locally developed assessment. And that locally developed assessment would be flushed out at next year's OFRI workshops. So in that regard, uh, that is what our options are. So there is an element on technical skill assessment. And I don't want to get on a soapbox and talk about statistics and reliability and validity. But let me do a quick refresher on this. Uh, validity assesses what you say you are assessing. It's mapped against the standards and it's validated, reviewed, and approved by a group of industry advisory committee. This is where we have some OFRI backdrop with Julie and Nori uh, and their team helping to look over what we're doing. It's given us some uh, uh, validity as to what we're doing. Reliability is a consistency measure that is, uh, it can actually be documented through numbers. So. Going back to statistics, there's a Kronbach alpha reliability coefficient, plus there's other reliability coefficients, not to disgrace against Kronbach alpha. 
But this basically is that you have a scoring rubric, that there's controls in place of administration, and then it's the same time after time. Test, retest, reliability is incorporated into what reliability is. So if you offer the test in the spring every year, and the course sequencing is similar, you should get similar results. If you're getting different results, meaning uh, it happened during the pep assembly week and spirit week at school, and that's a bad environment to introduce into a consistent scoring. So we can work around this is through scoring rubric, how we administer the tests, and what is the information in administering the test, meaning, uh, it should happen not on a Monday or Friday. It should happen, here's the scoring prep that needs to be done. And evaluating here is a quality uh, of. Now, if you have a scoring rubric and you work with industry-based people, you can get the test, retest, reliability, and validity all in one. So what is a technical skill assessment requirement? All students who are concentrators need to take the assessment. As you get that data back, you work with your region coordinators and you review that data and you submit it to the Department of Education. And you come up with a plan to address, here's what we think our data is telling us and this is how we're going to improve it. So future webinars, mark your calendar for April 21st. And questions, if you have any questions, please email them to me. I know this is a brief webinar, we're not going as long as our previous,